Hello there again everyone. I bet you can't guess who this is, can you? No. It's me. Hello. Now then, I'm going to cover the outside of the journal, the cover. It might turn into two videos this because I don't want to rush it and be pushed for time because there's a fair few things that I just I just want to go through with you and again especially if you're a newbie you might end up going a bit ah, I don't know what she's on about so I want to just take my time with doing the front cover to make sure that you can all comprehend what I'm twittering on about okay so this is the cover on the journal that I showed you originally and I'm going to actually replicate this if you want to do something completely different in terms of its decoration then the, you know that's that's up to you um, but I want to just quickly go well not quickly I want to take my time going through the process of how I went about making this cover now then again in the previous video I did say that you could call this done you could decorate up this front part of your first envelope and you can actually call that journal then done okay now for me i prefer to add the cover on top of it because i still think that the envelopes are a little bit too flimsy for them to be a front cover so i'm going to use a piece of card and quite thick card so this is uh, about 300 GSM. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is in pounds in America. 110, something like that, maybe. I'm guessing um, you might have to uh, ask Siri on your phone or do a bit of a Google search. But I'm going to use just this sheet of card. Now, Depending on the sizes of the envelopes that you've used, you might need a bigger piece of card that you can then cut down to size. I'm going to use a piece of A4 card and I think, as I showed you previously, it's too deep, so I'm going to have to cut this down anyway. But I need to make sure that it's right lengthwise as well because it's got to wrap around the front and the back of this cover or this part of the journal I should say. Now as you can see I've only inserted two card booklets that I've done that one and that one. I haven't inserted my third one yet because I'm umming and ahhing as to whether I'm going to add an envelope or tags or another journal card. I'm not I'm not quite sure yet whether I'm going to add another journal booklet or not. But already you can see that she's ending up being a chunky monkey. So we need to make sure that we're covering all of this depth here because we haven't even decorated it up yet or added anything else to it. So she's going to end up being quite a chunky one. Now then, I'm just going to put these to one side for a minute out of the way. Okay, and I'm going to, now I'm going to pull the booklets out in a minute. Now if I lay the envelope part onto the card you can already see that because of the ribbons that are overhanging the the edge of the envelopes I need to take that into account when I come to position this onto here all right where's my trusty ruler gone oh god come across it in a minute I'll use this one in the meantime okay so I need to take into account that there are things sticking out beyond the edges of the envelopes if I take those booklets out you don't get a true measure of how far away from the edge of this card this part needs to be so they need to be in situ to start with to see how much you need to take into account okay so working on the basis of this and i don't mind some overhang from the edge of the um card that will be the journal cover but i don't want too little and i don't want masses now 
just visually looking at that I'm working on about half an inch okay so I've just placed my ruler on there and just done a, a an eyeball and I'm working on about half an inch okay so that's the first thing I know that I want these positioned about half an inch from the edge of this card now I'm going to take the booklets out because I don't want them in the way when I'm going to glue this to that so we're working on half an inch this way and now I need to work out the depth so this overall measures seven and one eighth now I, I want the journal cover to be fractionally longer at the top and at the bottom so I'm going to add on I'm going to add on I'm going to add on an eighth of an inch on each side so that takes it up to just fractionally under seven and a half inches just double check because I'm better off double checking than than making a boo-boo of it right I'm going to cut it to seven and a half inches and then I'm going to trim it down a bit further because I can always trim off I can't add so I know that depth wise I want seven and a half inches to start with and then I'll reassess seven and one half okay get rid of that oh and you know all these bits that you cut off keep them carol has plans okay put you down there for a minute and let's have another look so if i lay my envelopes on there can you see what i'm looking at can you see i want just a tiny lip at the bottom and I want a tiny lip at the top, but I've got a big lip at the top. So I am just going to trim off another eighth of an inch off of there. Now, as I say, if I'd cut it to the size that I originally thought, and then found I'd cut it too small, I would be up a creek without a puddle. So this time I'm lining the edge of my card up with the measurement on this side. So many trimming one eighth off. Yes. Right. Let's have a butcher. Don't keep bits like that. Um. Let's just have a double check again. As I say, better to be safe than sorry. So I've got a tiny lip at the bottom, and I'm happy with my lip at the top. Okay. So. <gasps> all going good so far so I've got the height right I know that this edge here the bit that opens up is going to be half an inch from the edge there roughly okay and then I can just loosely fold that around now I say loosely okay because I'm going to be doing a little bit of creasing and I just want a rough idea so can you see now I've got a very light crease in there now I want to make a spine a spine area and so I'm going to use my score pal now if you're new to doing all of this you might not have all these bits of equipment just yet they do come in handy does a, a good old score pal but it's not necessary you could use um, like an embossing tool and a ruler and and do the creases but these take out the having to work out measurements with rulers and things okay now that initial crease mark into about there which is my five and five eighths Okay, I'm going to do my first crease mark at five and a half inches. 
Now again, you will have to work out for yourself which measurement you're going to use. Now I think that I might add don't want a half inch spine. Hmm. I'm gonna go with a half inch spine. If I just do it lightly. And if I fold that way and crease. sit on there and then I'm hoping you can see this can you see that that's that half inch mark that crease mark that I've just done lightly there if I put it up next to the edges of the envelopes it's just slightly above the height of the envelopes so I'm happy with the half inch spine because it's allowing for the depth of all of this all right so we're going to go ahead with that half inch spine. Okay. And I tend to normally flip it over and do it again. Because basically what we're doing is we're breaking down the fibres within the card. And if you only do it on one side, sometimes the card will crack. So doing your creases on both sides just helps to break down those fibres so that they won't crack. Fingers crossed. Yeah, see it's cracked a little bit, but not to worry. It's, I can cover it over. But we don't want a massive cracking of the card. Okay. And then we do what's called burnishing. So you use your um, uh, bone folder, couldn't think of the word, and you just run it up and down and it just makes those creases more permanent. Okay, so can you see now we end up with this kind of shape here with the spine on the end. Now then, at the moment, this side is longer than this side. So, again, I know that that's going to sit on there. I know that I've got my rough half an inch-ish. That's going to come up and over the top and that will become the front and it extends beyond the envelopes. But I want it the same size, this, as that on the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure and that is just fractionally under five and a half inches so if I put this to five and a half inches then I know that this then will be the same size as the back so I'm going to place this crease mark on five and a half inches which is there and then I'm going to trim away the excess so now I know that this and this is the same size so now it doesn't matter which way is up and the right way around and all the rest of it okay so let me just go through that again quickly so when you have all your journaly bits inside you can see that you've got some extension beyond the envelopes we want to make sure that when we place this on the right hand side of the card which will be the back part of the cover that we're allowing a large enough lip to accommodate some of this that extends beyond the envelopes all right we can also then make a mark down here which is almost butt up to the edge of the envelopes at this side so then we know what size our back cover is going to be 
we also need to measure the depth of the envelopes and add an eighth of an inch on this way and an eighth of an inch on this way so that we're cutting it so that it is fractionally bigger at the top and at the bottom. So again, when we place this down on the right hand side, we've got that little bit of a border going around the top, around the bottom, and then a larger border on the right hand side. I've done a half inch spine, which is where I've done both of my creases to make the spine. I then need to make sure that I've cut this then to the same size as this. From the crease marks to the edge of the card, they're now the same size. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up this card. And I'm sorry, but this is the boring bit and it's not something that I can do the prep work for beforehand until I'd cut it all out. So you're just going to have to bear with. Okay, so again, I'm just using that small circular motion. Now, at the moment, it's making an edge here. I don't mind the effect that it's creating because I'm going to be covering most of that over with other images and stuff but I do want to create that vintage edge look along the edge of the card so can you see look I've got all this funny patterning here I will be covering most of that over so I can be a little bit more rough and ready about inking this part up because I know that I'm going to be covering it up. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, ink on the two crease marks that I've made here but I want to be a little bit lighter I don't want to be heavy handed because this is almost water-based ink it means that every time I'm adding this ink to the spine, it's seeping into the cracks in the card and is therefore making it that little bit weaker. So I don't want to put too much ink on because I will make the card that little bit weaker where I've already made it weak because I've creased it. I am just going to quickly run over the edge like that so that it extends beyond the crease mark. Can you see? And I'm going to fold it that way and I'm going to do the same on that side. Now I'm also going to do the inside cover as well and I would need to do that before I do the next stage. Am I doing on time? Right, so I've got enough time for di to do this bit. Because as I say, I don't want to addle your brain too much and you might need to watch the video a couple of times and have a piece of paper and pen handy, or a journal, <laughs> and write in your own notes of the things that you think that you might not remember so that when you're away from your video watching apparatus then you've got some notes to just jog your memory as to what it is you're meant to be doing and again it's it's also handy to have those notes so that if you decide that you want to do another one you know what you're doing and they might just jog your memory and then you might not have to watch the video again So, once I've inked up the inside and the outside, I'm ready for the next bit. Now I'm going to be covering over this left hand side. I'm not going to cover the right hand side. I'm going to be covering over the front and I'm going to be covering over the back and I will be adding something to the spine. But at this stage, we just need to be working with this piece that's on the right hand side 
And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to flip the envelope part over and I'm going to put tacky glue all on the back of this envelope. There it is. Make sure my nozzle's not clogged up. Okay, so I'm going to place glue around all four sides. Not got a steady hand today. Move my jumper out of the way, I don't want it dangling in the in the glue. Okay, and then I'm going to place plenty of glue on top. Now some people at this point might use, might decide to use their double sided tape. You can do that if you wish. Me personally I don't like the fact that sometimes the tape dries out and so it can end up peeling off. That's just the what the what I found with it sometimes and I would much rather use some glue. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is make sure that I've got plenty around the edges and then I'm just going to run my finger from the edge in towards the center because I don't want the glue oozing out at all because I've only got narrow borders to try and rub the glue off so I'd rather there be no excess glue that oozes out okay then I'll just rub it on my hand and it will rub off okay flip it over Remember that I've got roughly half an inch on this side and then I'm going to put this edge up to this crease. Not over the crease, but up next to it. And I just need to watch the top and the bottom edge to make sure that they are even as well. So if I just spin it round now. I've only got a tiny bit at the bottom but a bit more at the top so I'm just going to push it up a touch and again that's the nice thing about the liquid glue is it gives me a chance to to move stuff about if I've used the double sided tape that's not quite so easy to do okay what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to break here I'm going to let you catch up because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that over there like that and I'm going to sit a book on it so that it's applying some pressure to make sure that that envelope is evenly attached onto the back of that card. Might even do it that way and then get a book. Okay, I'll see you in a bit for the next bit and hopefully I'll be all stuck down by then. Don't forget, replay it if you want, write your own notes. Every little bit of info that you can glean will help. All right, don't be afraid, it's only paper. See you in a bit, bye.